I want to finish with the talking about Jackson because the reason why I brought up with you being one one, and I've heard you talk about it with him, uh, with the expectations he has to deal with, and you mentioned something you never really failed yourself when yeah. you were getting up through the the ranks or in college, high school. I think that people forget that Jackson it was on a similar path to that. He never really failed, never until facing the highest competition at twenty years yeah. old. Can you just touch on that? Because I think that that learning how to fail ultimately is the the last piece for even the most talented players out there. 100%, you know, and look, the first time you get punched in the mouth, it's tough. Like, yeah. I mean, you, you talk about Jackson Holiday, a kid that had so much success in high school, hit 600. You know, he blew through every minor league system at a young age, much younger than anybody else when he was playing against those guys and just had all kinds of success and blew through it. Then all of a sudden you get to the big leagues like I did, and you get punched for the first time. Yeah. And it sets you on your heels because you don't know. You've never failed before. You don't know how to respond to that. And it set me on my heels. And I could tell Jackson – and listen, some Jackson had a lot of attention, obviously, and I did too. He came up to – I felt so bad for him because I was almost reliving 1989 in a lot of ways when Jackson came up because there was 30 or 40 media members. It took him out of his routine. You could tell he's a great kid. He's a nice kid, but he don't. He was like I was. I didn't want to talk to those guys. I understood yeah. they had a job, but like I just wanted to play baseball. I wanted to do my job. I wanted to learn. Jackson is, I think, a lot in the same way that I was. But he went ahead and he did all the interviews, but it took him out of his game a little bit. Uh, and then he got off to a rough start, as we know, and you could tell the body language was a little bit differently. And he goes down. And what is what I love about Jackson, they gave him two or three things, and you've touched on them because I watch your show. He cut the leg kick down a little bit, flattened the swing a little bit, wanted to be more on time with the fastball because at the end when he got sent down the first time, they were just kind of beating him with heaters right down the gut, mm -hmm. you know, because they had slowed the bat down a lot before that. Um, and then he he really worked, went down and worked on some things to get better, and he came back up. And I could tell instantly when he stepped back the second time. Uh, in Mayo, in some ways, too, I'm seeing that yeah. the body language a little bit different. Okay, I've been here once before. I don't know everything, but I'm a little bit more comfortable with my situation. And as you know, for young players, success right away really helps. And of course, Jackson hits the granny first game back. It's the relief. That is, whew, right, a chance to breathe for a second. Right. And he's been playing really well since then. Now, one thing I'll say about Jackson, what I love about a young player is his ability to separate the two offense and defense. And even though he struggled the first time up, I still think the defense was pretty good, like yeah. above average defense for a guy learning a new I position. Agree. I agree. I think he was able to separate, and that's really hard for young players to do. And he's and he's playing real, a premium second base right now, too. Yeah, and that's the part, and people do forget, with all being young on the hitting side, fielding-wise, he was drafted as a shortstop. Sure. The minor league wants them to get reps across the infield, specifically up the middle for him, but he wasn't a second baseman traditionally. Right. So he's learning as he goes, just like he's being a hitter. And, and I, I'm glad you mentioned not to give you some, uh, bring you back some anxiety from when you got brought up, but you understood that the stress mm. that when you're stressed as a hitter, and I noticed with Jackson too, he's pulling his head off of everything. Yep. You could tell he wasn't relaxed. And the other part, I bet Ben, a lot of people told you how good you were when you were coming up. You're so talented. You're going to be this. And, it's nice to get those compliments, right? Sure. It's, it's awesome. But sometimes when people tell you how great you are, mm -hmm. sometimes you need a reminder that you can always be better, being humbled. I remember even with Grayson Rodriguez, I love Grayson. He's got so much potential, and you can see when he's on, man. Yeah. But I remember when Grayson was coming up, everyone was telling him, you're going to be just like Mike Lucina. You're going to just be that next guy. And rightfully so, he should think that. But then he got hit, yeah. and it was the humble going like, man, I'm not as good as I think I am. I can be. Right. But I got to do some work. Jackson came up. He seems fine. I think the, the same thing. Learn to fail. Get comfortable. And now they're, they're proving themselves they can do it. Yeah. That's the last thing. It's like, hey, I actually, I, I believe in the hype. I know what I'm capable of. But I want to see the result. 